Welcome to Five Strike Weekly, everybody. Atlanta United are unfortunately on a different type of streak now. But can we turn it around Wednesday night against our expansion rivals? We're gonna get into all of that and more coming up. Welcome to the show, Five Strike Fam. I'm AJ, this is Mark. Before we get into it, become a member of the notification squad by hitting the bell next to the subscribe button or hop over from Facebook and subscribe. You can also find all our content on the Jinico USA platform anywhere in the world on Amazon Fire TV, Roku, iOS, Google Play, and many other streaming platforms. Coming to you guys from an 80 degree studio in Atlanta where there is no air conditioning because it has broken. Uh, hoping to get this fixed very soon, but we are in a sauna right now. But we are here for you guys and we're gonna break down this match. And yes, so Atlanta United, it's two losses back to back for the first time since 2017. And in all competitions, we are 0-7-1 when conceding the first goal. That is just not good numbers. No. Not no. at all. But, uh, <laughs> yeah, and so let's get into this match against Real Salt Lake. Uh, just a Friday night nightmare, really, in my opinion. Um, mm. You know, not a fantastic first half. Kind of a trap, kind of a slog. Mm. Uh, you know, they get their goal from distance, which is uh, kind of... Kind of surprises us a little bit. Yeah. And, uh, you know, we have some fight back. We get back into the match, and then it's just a heartbreaker at the end. I think, uh, you know, this is one of the worst tasting matches that I've, like, ever had to experience for a United, I think. Uh, especially losing two in a row in this fashion. It's just, yeah, it's not exactly a, uh, a fantastic um, you know, Friday weekend, Memorial Day weekend. <laughs> Absolutely not. It, it's it's a bitter pill to swallow for sure. I mean, yeah. I was trying to think of uh, the worst losses in the United history after this yeah. one. Yeah, this I isn't think, it, but it's close. It's, oh man, <laughs> uh, it reminds me of Dallas last year, almost, yeah. almost. But it actually, yeah. you know, at least they played well in that Dallas game. Right. This one, it was like the performance did, yeah. did it really um, warrant a result? I mean, I know yeah. the board is of the opinion that it did. Uh -huh. I'm not convinced. Yeah, I mean, because, yeah, we, we had some fight back, uh, but in terms of on a whole, like, if you're looking at the majority of the match, yeah, we didn't look like we were going to be winning it. And we looked like we were trying to go for the draw at the end, and that's what kind of bit us in the ass because, you know, we get a little bit less aggressive uh, where we're just trying to see out the match and it's not exactly how we uh, foresaw it for sure at all. Uh, we thought a you know match that's a little bit more back and forth would be a little bit more uh, conducive to us, but I think it comes down to the fatigue, lack of legs, all that travel back and forth from the MLS scheduling gods or devils, I would say, even. Uh, it's just, uh, you know, it's terrible in terms of uh, on their legs so far. Yeah. They look dead. Yeah. Absolutely dead. And, and I mean, even yeah. coming into this week, you know, with uh, we mentioned this, with Salt Lake, they did not have to travel because they played their last match at home as well. Yeah. Atlanta gets one less day of rest and they have to travel. So really, yeah. it, uh, Salt Lake had a couple more days. Exactly. You have that and then, yeah, they look way more energetic. They look way more like they wanted it and that, uh, yeah. I'll yeah. say this as well, you know, the goals, you might say, okay, they're really good goals, kind of lucky, but mm -hmm. honestly, that's what Salt Lake does. They yeah, true. try to get into mm -hmm. those positions and fire at will. I mean, they have the players to do it, mm -hmm. Salcedo and Severino being two of them. Yeah, and Rusnak uh, didn't even get you know uh, his due uh, in this match, but yeah, he's a guy to really get into the MLS goal of the week conversations week after week. So yeah. it's, yeah, I mean, they're just a team that likes to shoot from distance. And uh, yeah, we'll we'll see if uh, that's something that uh, is a weakness for LA United. It seems like at least in this match, it looks like it was or something. But yeah, uh, but yeah getting into this match, uh, at least from the start, uh, you saw a little bit of rotation. Nagby yeah. moves into the ten role. You have Pereira coming in for his MLS uh, debut start. Uh, and then yeah, I mean, and that's for Tito, of course. Um, yeah, and then I think what it was Parky coming back in uh, at left back. I mean, it wasn't a ton of rotation, and that's where it's kind of. Oh, and Escobar, of course. Yeah. Uh, yeah no. Sorry. Yeah. Uh, no. So it was sorry. Parky in for Escobar. Yeah. Try right. to do this from memory, guys. Sorry. And uh, yeah, so it was 
kind of a, a different looking 11 in that mm-hmm. sense where you didn't see a lot of flow from the team because uh, not only just legs, but the familiarity with each other. I think Pereira from the start, uh, it gives a different look from that left side. And also Nagby, when he is in that 10 role, isn't the most convincing in my opinion. No, yeah. I think this was more of a three central midfielders set up more than yeah. anything, especially the more way like a four, Nagby three, three, Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah Cause Nagby's not a true 10. Yeah. You know, he makes those line breaking passes. Mm-hmm. You know, he can get the ball to the guy who makes the assist or makes the play, mm-hmm. but he's not necessarily going to be that playmaker. And I think, yeah. I think you saw that, you know, and. I yeah, he's like, a deep lying playmaker more so, I think, and a guy that can, um, you know, always be available between the lines. But in terms of that final ball, it's just a little wanting a lot of times. Mm-hmm. And that's where it's uh, it's difficult, I think, in this match. Uh, you know, Nagby and Pereira don't really kind of link up a, a ton. It's uh, Pereira and Joseph, like there's not a whole lot of connection there. Gressel, I think, is absolutely knackered at this point. Yeah. No legs. And you could you could see that already when he came in against Vancouver Whitecaps. Yeah. I mean, it's just one of those things where like dude needs it. My man needs a rest. Yeah, like, I mean he's he has two goals and two assists, and he's been stuck on those numbers for Yeah, for a while, and yeah. it's I think it's because of that lack of rest and kind of guys to be able to sub in for them and is that a you know an indictment on Frank DeBoer or is it an indictment on our roster or is it an indictment on the players it's, you it's know interesting. it's yeah yeah I mean like going back to the starting lineup uh our top three creative players are Ezekiel yeah. Barco, Tito Vialba, and Petey Martinez. Yeah. And none of them were, well, Petey was available, he comes in, but yeah. he did not start. And that's understandable, right? because he's played a lot, mm-hmm. and it's unfortunate that Tito got hurt. Right. But uh, at the end of the day, when you're missing all of that creativity, I think it showed up. I mean, right. the uh, the final count of shots from open play was 14 to seven. Yeah. You know, like, we, yeah. when does Atlanta United get doubled up on shots? Not exactly. often. Exactly. And so, yeah, it's they're working us around the park. They're, uh, you know, creating their shots almost at will, and we can't do anything about it. We are chasing shadows. We are giving them way too much space right near the D. It's just, uh, you know, kind of uncharacteristic things. I think it's that, uh, that product of fatigue. And uh, yeah, I mean, with that, uh, with their first goal for RSL, it's a shot from distance from Bofu Saucedo and Saucedo. I mean, it's just, it's one of those shots that, um, you know, Lorenowitz, he's not close enough. He's He's not not closing him down. uh, And then between he and I believe LGP, there's a miscommunication and Saucedo just gets an open look. And uh, Guzan, I mean, yes. you know, I feel like it's one of these things and I'm, I think I'm gonna, uh, you know, bang on him a little bit about this. Shots from distance are a little bit uh, his undoing mm-hmm. so far in 2019. Um, you know, you remember against the Philly Union where mm-hmm. there's a shot from distance from the rookie that nutmegs, I believe, uh, I think Miles Robinson and uh, yeah, just gets through the legs and you know, he just falls down. Yeah. It's one of those things where he maybe should do better or could do better, but it is also, you know, I think the guy's not closing down. And yeah. so it's, uh, I yeah. think it's a symptom. I think he, you know, is a guy that uh, can control the box. He can yeah. command it and, you know, headers or like crosses coming in, he can handle that. It's just a matter of those shots from distance are really an undoing, especially this match right I mean, now. Yeah, I mean, maybe a Zach Steffen can save those, you know, or sure. those quicker keepers. I, yeah. And I will say that uh-huh. Guzan's not the quickest, right. but then I think your defenders know that, you know yeah. what I mean? Like these guys have played together for a while now. I think yeah. defense, the relationship between defense and goalkeepers is important. Yeah. Atlanta United, I think at their best, close down shots to where even the shots that do eventually come off, mm-hmm. you know, they're saveable. They're right. not too difficult for Guzan. Right. In this case, that did not happen. Right. There was the uh, the save, uh, I believe in the first half, where he had that very strong right arm to uh, see one of the, the chances off uh, for a corner. Uh, but other than that, I mean, it's just, you know, we, we get killed from distance in this match. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, you know, I think the, the definite positives in this match was that when PT and Escobar came in, I think those are the right moves from Frank de Boer uh, in terms of substitutions because they were immediate impacts. Like when PT came in, I mean, just to, you know, set up our goal alone, you know, 
Yeah. We're just creating a ton of chances when they when they came in. You could see that the energy changed. Uh, and you can see what happens when you have a an energetic PT versus a tired defense. Mm -hmm. It's really what you need, and that's what PT can offer because yeah. that creativity led to uh, you know he's that's a line splitting pass uh, from the right side from PT, yeah. which I think is a good side for him to be on because he can uh, either cut in or he can you know um, you know create from the wings, Franco Escobar with a beautiful touch uh, yeah. to get to the byline, you know. All you have to do is uh, just really square ball, and then Joseph Martinez meets it at the near post. I think uh, you know it's a it's a beautiful goal, and it's a kind of reminiscent goal of yesteryear. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, like this, uh, obviously the highlight of the match for Atlanta United, and it, it was a really well worked goal. And yeah. I, yeah, I totally agree in terms of uh, you know you immediately see the impact of Petey. Mm -hmm. uh, I really love that Escobar that Petey went wide and Escobar makes the underlapping run. You yes. don't see that too often, but yeah. it's actually really sophisticated and mm -hmm. it's encouraging that the team can create goals like that. Right. So uh, you know it's. Yeah, it, it's uh, you like to see that uh, because you know you know what you can get from a Franco Escobar and a PT Martinez when they're fully fit, lots of energy, mm -hmm. uh, and can come in and make a difference, in which they did. Yeah. But um, so in terms of that, I think there's that's you know almost the only positive of this match. Uh, it's enjoy. not a ton. Yeah. Uh, I think Parky getting forward pretty often is uh, a good sign if he's playing right back. I mean, in terms of that, but I think the lack of uh, you know just the ability in the final third that's of course is undoing. Yeah. Um, so maybe you don't actually want to see him too much. I mean, in, he was uh, one on one with the goalkeeper, but then it's yeah. like it's Michael Parker's, and that's not an yeah. insult to the player. The quality he is, but he, yeah, most he, center backs are yeah. not Perez. <laughs> exactly, right, exactly. And you know, he's he's running from the right side. He's making a lot of stuff happen from yeah. uh, from right back. And you know, he could have played in Joseph. It just didn't happen. I don't think he's got that vision as uh, you know an outfield player. It's just you know not his mo, mm -hmm. and uh, so it's unfortunate. But uh, and again, you know, the fight from the boys, you yeah. know. Dead legs or not, I think uh, they were still fighting to the end, even till the last second. It was just a matter of sometimes the mind wants to do something and your body just can't, can't mm -hmm. do it. Yeah. And I think that's the case in this uh, point. Normally, I think it's not an excuse, but I think, you know, six and 19, exactly. uh, in terms of six matches in 19 days, yes. and about to be eight and 28 by the month, uh, the end of the month. Yeah, it's, mm. so uh, in terms of, some of the negatives, uh, again, I think it's we don't create a lot of chances. We only have 10 shots in this match uh, and against a team that's pretty open. I mean, I think you figure, you know, if we were a little bit more energetic and had, uh, you know, our legs under us, we probably should and would create more. Uh, I think the lack of familiarity definitely played its part. Um, you know, it's just also Eric Rometty. Kind of had to single out a little bit in this mm -hmm. match. Not his best match. Yeah, yeah. I mean, like, and he's he's uh, made himself so important to the team since he's come in. Mm -hmm. So you know, when he doesn't play well or he's not playing, it sticks out. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, he, uh, you know, he's not connecting a lot of passes in this in this yeah. match. It's, uh, you know, they're not closing down very well. He's not really pressing. It's. It's just not his uh, not his best match for sure. No. It's a uh, it's a symptom of this fatigue, I think. I think so. um, and you know, I think <laughs> you know for Real Salt Lake also, like they were just really really good at creating those shots from distance that uh, just really hurt us yeah. uh, and it's something we couldn't control. Also, another part uh, is you know the referee maybe could have whistled a little earlier. Jair Marufo, <laughs> yeah, it's like the end of the match. You know, it gets to like, essentially we had three minutes of stoppage and it's like essentially three to, you know, three minutes to 30 seconds, uh, you know, gone and it's, it should have been called. Yeah. Essentially. Yeah. I mean, you know, cause it's, it's tough and you know, so that type of, uh, that type of match, it's, uh, you know, you want it to end when the final <laughs> whistle should be called. 
it's yeah because uh, the referees do give some you know yeah, some, some leeway. leeway when the team is on the attack yeah. it, but then it's like when was so when did that attack really start right yeah it, it's and that's that's the issue i think as well i mean yes we didn't close down uh, well enough so in their second goal let's break it down you know it's essentially um, you know, Savarino, like, he gets the ball when, essentially, Darnton Nagby, uh, you know, he's not closing down, uh, my man in the middle, and he basically, uh, finds him without, you know, Nagby really cutting off any passing lanes, yeah. and, you know, LGP has to come out, yeah. he, it's not arguably his man, and he gets... Uh, kind of beat for, you know, dribbling and pace, mm -hmm. and yeah. Honestly, LGP was on him yeah. when he released the shot. That was a, I mean... He wasn't in front of him, and I think that's the issue. Yeah. It's, it's but, but lack it's still, of legs. Yeah, exactly. But, you know, like, even to pull that shot off with yeah. someone, like, kind of next to you like sure. that. Yeah. It is a quality goal, I think. Absolutely it is. Yeah, you know, and I think part of the issue here is the approach, mm -hmm. you know. The, at the end of the day, when you try to hold out for a certain result. Yes. This is what can happen. Exactly, you, yeah, like the announcer is even, uh, God, these announcers, we haven't gotten to that yet. That's the biggest negative, but anyway. Uh, <laughs> so yeah, like, you know, going uh, from there, everybody's expecting a shot almost at that, this point. It's like, you don't have anything to lose. Yeah. Like it's, you know, pretty much counting down. I mean, take a shot, have a, have a Have go. a shot, yeah. That's and uh, you know, Guzan, can't do anything about this, no. but it is, you know, another shot from distance that gets him. And I think that's, it's just, it's tough, yeah. but you know, it's something that is starting to be symptomatic. And I hope it's not something that is a really big pattern in this season, but, um, you know, you've seen, but we've seen the team hold yeah. out for results. And yeah. even in this run, I mean, the win yeah. against Colorado, the uh -huh. win against Orlando, we talked about this, yeah. you know, if those teams had quality players who could finish, yeah. we're maybe talking about a different result in those matches. And you see that in this match. Yeah. Salcedo, Rusnak, Baird, yeah. Severino. If you look at their shots and, you know, on this, uh, this map here, essentially it's a ton of shots from distance. And, you know, well, at least it's, uh, yeah, six of them from distance, maybe seven. Um, they were testing us all came from distance. Yeah. It's, you know, something that they were targeting for sure. And it's tough. I mean, you know, they maybe found a weakness of ours that, uh, you know, we are able to deal with, especially with dead, dead legs. Mm -hmm. And, um, yeah, you know, so you have um, not only that, but... Let's get to these announcers. <laughs> Dear God. I mean, these two uh, on Unimas, on Twitter, it is horrid, horrid. Uh, just Loretta Wicks, you've got, oh, uh, yeah, you've got that. <laughs> you've got every single name, just kind of like, just a little, it's extra. It's just so much extra. There's and, a lot of extra that goes into, I mean, oh, did you the final goal? No, 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 no. Yeah, uh, yeah. So. It, no, it's not a goal. <laughs> That's a golazo. I, I wanted to uh. just murder them. <laughs> but, because, <laughs> yeah, I think our, our, our good buddy, Payson Swin, had on uh, Twitter, uh, he tweeted something to the uh, effect of like, oh, okay, um, you know, that glimmer of hope where the announcers say, you know, oh, that's not a goal. Like, oh, oh yeah. could, could this be offside? <laughs> like somehow, magically, right. something else is like- Maybe VAR no? to the rescue? And it's like, oh no, no, it's a galasso. It's like, oh, oh murder yourself. <laughs> but, uh, anyway, so uh, with this then, uh, let's get to the post-match quotes. Uh, we're having a little fun at the announcer's expense because that's all we can do when such a drab result happens. And again, oh, I apologize for uh, no fan cams and uh, you know a player ratings video or something like that after that match. It is just, it's a Friday night, it's six and 19. It's been a grueling season. So I you know, very much apologize. We will, uh, yeah, all be uh, you know trying to do better, of course, but uh, yeah. So, we got you, we got you. Yeah, but we got you going forward, fam. <laughs> but uh, let's get into the post-match quotes. And one of the most notable things that Pronk DeBoer said, uh, I'll let you read it. I mean, it's, uh, it's very interesting, I think. I think so, yeah. It wasn't in front of me. I had shouted, make a foul, make a foul, because they were trying to escape, and we have to recognize that in that moment. We still didn't do that, and they kept on going. Every time, it's like a domino. It just drops, it goes, and every time, we are too late. 
Of course, you can say it's a good goal, but it cannot happen. We have to make the foul much easier on their half, and then we can settle back behind the ball. Then it's no problem. It really was the last second they scored that goal, and we can blame ourselves for that. Yeah, I mean, it's, uh, it, it's something where they should have fouled earlier, and if it was, I mean, I think some of them were arguing that uh, the you know chance that they make could have gotten uh, from a free kick might have been just as dangerous, and you see how good they are at uh, shooting from distance. But I think it's the last last kick, essentially. Like you try to stop the match, essentially. Especially when the ball was on the wing, like before Nagby engages yeah. him, like that would have been a good place to foul because then they have to Absolutely. play in a free kick that. They have to maybe find a head. Alina is decent at defending those situations. Yeah, our, our set piece defending has been really, really good this year, much better than in years past. So at least in that regard, uh, that's been an improvement for us this season. But um, yeah, and in terms of uh, you know uh, talking about some of the the players, in terms of uh, Dion Pereira, and it was his first MLS start, of course. Uh, Frank de Boer said that. You know, uh, his start, he thought he did really well, that it was a hard match to win, you know, that he had to cover a lot of work, but I think uh, he did really well and he can be proud of his performance. Um, I think, yeah, I think generally on a whole, without having really affected the match too much, he was, uh, you know, maybe left wanting a little, but I think he brought some energy to that left side. Uh, something that we needed, but you know, I think all in all, it's that lack of familiarity that kind of plagued this match. I mean, I think so. Yeah, I mean, I'd like to see Pereira alongside a PD or Barco. Yeah, exactly. Or, you know, like uh -huh. where he's not There's continuity. To exactly, and yeah. where he's not dependent off of creativity. Maybe he can be a little more direct. You know, right. I think that's the role. Uh, I think and. Uh, yeah. His role makes sense in that lineup. Right, exactly. Yeah, he, he provides that energy and like it's almost Tito like, but he doesn't have the uh, you know creative uh, ability yet in this mm -hmm. team. But I think it's it's just coming. It's just a matter of you know getting that chemistry with the team. Uh, but I think right now his best suited uh, thing, at least for him, is to run at defenses sure. um, and just be as direct as possible and try to either get a shot off or you know lay it off to Joseph, something like that. But yeah, um, yeah. so in terms of uh, the post-match quotes, that wraps it up for that, but uh, some interesting uh, kind of stats, if you will, coming out after the match that, uh, in terms of the, the days of rest, we'll put this graphic up, it's from Mike Conti of 92.9. Uh, the days of rest between the matches, uh, between us and our opponents, there's kind of a drastic, um, you know, difference between us and them. I think the difference, you know, the major ones being us uh, versus Columbus yeah. and us in New England. I mean, those were uh, still, I mean, look at that. You know, we didn't win those matches. Sure. You know? Well, we, we, we beat New England, but we, we didn't. Beat, exactly. We, we beat, didn't, didn't beat Columbus. And yeah. so that's, you know, yes, that's a, a rain plagued, uh, different, crazy match. Sure. But, but... Uh, and then you have, you know, where it's. Uh, a little uneven, I think yeah. definitely, you know, near the beginning, of course, but... Yeah, um, well, then, and just for context, in the beginning, yeah. that was Champions League play. That's right. why there was a difference in the schedule. Uh -huh. And had Atlanta advanced, they actually would have... Uh, yeah, probably know. complicated things even more. Yeah. But, yeah. Uh, yeah, and hopefully some matches would have been moved and whatnot if, right. it, if it were. But, um, you know, in terms of this, I think it's also slightly a red herring because, you know, it's not just these days before that. if. You look at it like if they had played, you know, a good run of matches before that our opponent. I mean, they pretty much could have uh, gone through that type of fatigue same for them. You know, it, it's like this: if they had played six through nineteen and then had seven days rest before that, they'd still be tired. It'd still be like, and especially with cross-country travel. I mean, so it's. Uh, I think you know, with that, it's a little bit of a red herring, but it yeah. is interesting to see nonetheless. I will say, like, I think from Orlando is when it starts to get a little dicey. I mean, Orlando had yeah. a full week when Atlanta had three days. Fine, but then the midweek trip to Vancouver, I yeah. think, is where MLS kind of loses the plot. That's the longest trip Atlanta has to make. Right, and then they come back east. To the east, to the east And then they come back west. Yeah. And then they go back east. Like, yeah. that's, I, so from that, I can understand why the team is tired. Yeah, Before absolutely. that, though. Exactly. Mm. And that's why we arguably did better in that little time frame, albeit it was against 
weaker sides that maybe weren't as dangerous going forward and so that maybe is the difference there so yeah. um you know there's just a lot of factors coming into play but it's an interesting graphic to look at so uh that wraps it up for the rsl match and let's get into the news and brad guzan i mean it is just uh you know say what you will about his goalkeeping in this past match or you know the past few matches or whatever um i think though still you know this guy is a stand-up citizen Absolutely. he uh just moments after the match he gets with the unified team he's still rah rah uh hands in and they're all you know just fighting for the same cause and i mean just to be able to you know almost forget that yeah not that you want him to forget that but it is you know in, you see how good of a person he is exactly in the in the moment yeah i think it's forgivable and i mm -hmm. i think it shows that guzan's really enthusiastic yeah. about this project and right. you know the unified team i, I think yeah. it's fantastic that somebody who's kind of the face of the club really and mm -hmm. truly uh takes such interest in this mm -hmm. yeah and uh yeah i think gressel and uh parky joined him on the sidelines after this but still it's just you know, yeah great to see after that match and it's uh kind of that caveat of uh of good after this uh mm -hmm. this is kind of a heartbreaker of a match yeah. but uh let's move on to where the all-star votes uh are uh, available now that is commenced. You can vote on Atlanta United players. There are some notable uh, omissions, <laughs> and I think it's probably because the team actually votes who are you know puts in who they uh, have who should be voted in. I think though maybe it's in the beginning of the season, and in the beginning of the season you didn't see maybe a Miles Robinson, right. you know, being such a big cog in this team. Yeah. So a person like Parky coming in, that's where it's like, oh, I mean, Parky, okay, right. and, you know, or an LGP, where it's like, yes, Miles Robinson probably has been our best center back. Not probably, yes, definitively, probably. Yeah. But um, sure. I think in that, that <clears throat> sense, it's like, yeah, it, it is a travesty that Miles Robinson doesn't get yeah. uh, kind of the vote. But there is the commissioner's vote, but I'm not so sure the commissioner is going to vote in Miles Robinson. He's going to vote in the likes of if, you know, a, you know, last year it was Wayne Rooney, you know, oh, yeah. and stuff like that, or Zlatan, I think, or is what yeah. it was. And so it's like that. He's going to vote in a guy that is going to bring a lot of optics into the league. Yeah. I'm not sure it's going to be Miles Robinson. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, and then it's, uh, it's debatable as to whether we even want our guys to participate in this. Exactly. And that's the bigger question. Uh, also, yeah, no Rometty as well. I mean, that's that's a shame as well for him. Sure. Uh, but <coughs> is it worth voting in our players? I mean, there's a large contingent or maybe a, a vocal minority uh, on social media that are, you know, kind of advocating for the, the fan base to not uh, vote for our players. Yet, I think currently our players are still in the top uh, they're maybe always, three. They're going to. I mean, yeah. we're, we're the best fans in the league. So. Yeah, we're the, that we have a, such a large fan base as yeah. well. And uh, but that's where it's you know also it's at Atlanta City Stadium, so it's like you know enemy territory. It's like yeah, I mean. My big issue is that it's midweek. I mean, like yeah, first of sure. all, if you want to showcase this match, have it on the weekend. Take like take a week off in the sure. league. Sure. I yeah. mean, but Major League Baseball also does it on a weekday as well. So, you know, there is that. It, yeah. it does become a thing where, yeah, like, uh, are people actually tuning into the All-Star game? That's sure. a whole different thing as well. Uh, but worth voting in our players, you know, there is a chance for them to get injured. There's that. There is the uh, kind of uh, cross-country travel that would happen as well because, uh, you know, yeah, they just had, would have just come from Los Angeles because the like the closest match would have been against LAFC. Oh. So yeah, it's that that uh, that run up, oh, and God. so you have that. Uh, yes, uh, from Atlanta to Orlando, it's not as bad, but it's still another trip for them on their legs. And then we play LA Galaxy. Some are advocating to vote LA Galaxy. In, <laughs> You know, Zlatan gets my vote. Yeah, Zlatan, you get just, you know, uh, Gio, or not Gio, but uh, the Dos Santos brother, Jonathan uh, mm -hmm. Dos Santos. Uh, you know, just vote as many of their guys in and then let's, uh, you know, let's see. But um, <laughs> yeah. so, I mean, is it? Is it that? Yeah, I think it's you vote at your own volition. Sure. Is my thing. Yeah, yeah. You do you. But what I will say though, for like the best players, like Joseph, who's been in the All Star game, yeah. for Petey, who's like, has 
gotten so many plaudits in the past. It's like, what is that? What does the All Star Game really mean to these guys at this sure. point? Sure, and you know, it, it is true. I don't, I don't think PT Martinez would really be like uh, super appreciative of it. Maybe. I mean, I think he would be honored, but I think, yeah. you know, in terms of what the competition would be, he'd be like, okay. I mean, maybe this is uh, maybe an audition for him at the world stage. So maybe you know, because Miguel Miron versus Real Madrid. Uh, look pretty lively, you know, there is that little aspect of his, it's being an audition. So, uh, you know, there is a little bit of that. It's kind of putting your players in the shop window on the world stage. Yeah, sure. So, you know, there's arguments for, there's arguments against, you vote at your own volition. So, again though, um, you know, speaking of plaudits, Atlanta United, they have been named the sports team of the year by Sports Business Journal. That is a huge, huge honor. Um, yeah, it's just, LA United, I think, w was there gonna be another? I mean, come on, you know, like second year team winning MLS Cup, ain't too bad. But you know, the, they were up against some stiff competition. I mean, the yeah. Warriors were in there. The, uh, I wanna say the uh, Vegas Golden Knights were in there. Yeah. You know, so I mean, these, yeah, they're some true. of the biggest sports in, I mean, some of the biggest teams in America. Right, and I think though, you know, you have a, a team winning in their second year of existence versus the Warriors. Warriors had, you know, they've they've won some championships sure. recently. It's it's one of those things. And, you know, plus they have five All Stars on. But not a lot. Not a lot of MLS teams win this. I think this we're the it's only true. second MLS team to win yeah. that. So I mean, you know, this wasn't bad. a freebie by any man. No, absolutely not. Uh, and I think, you know, story-wise, LA United, in terms of breaking records, in yeah. terms of, uh, you know, just everything around the team, it was, 2018 was special. Yes. So I think it's something to be cherished, and that's uh, a nice little cherry on top, if you will. Also, the Benz was named the Sports Facility of the Year, also by Sports Business Journal. Also, a big congrats to uh, everybody who uh, is a part of Mercedes-Benz Stadium, because, yeah, it's a top-class uh, facility, they essentially uh, make it as amenable to anybody that is inside the stadium. You know, it's just so many things that uh, you know you want. They have, yeah. You know, you, if it's you know uh, fan friendly pricing for food, if it's uh, you know, not a bad seat in the house. Yeah, honestly. exactly. You know, you have that. You have the massive halo board that uh, gives us. Just a fantastic view of a lot of things if we need it. Yeah. It's just uh you I know, haven't gotten tired of it. <laughs> yeah, it's a it's a first class facility and yeah, I mean it's it's uh, I'm glad to be at the Benz for sure. I know there are some people that are, you know, still wanting to go back to Bobby Dodd. But uh you know hey, do you wanna play in ninety six degrees? Exactly. Do you wanna sit in ninety six degrees? Yeah, I mean we're already doing this uh <laughs> in eighty degrees yeah, I know. weather in here. Oh my god. Yeah, so but <laughs> You know, it's it's we're, we're powering through right now. Yeah. But uh, me. yeah, exactly. And uh, so also, um, you know, there is the Campiones Cup that has just uh, been announced in terms of the date. It's August 14th, and we will be playing the winner of Liga MX. It's uh, kind of complicated, and uh, you know, we can maybe explain it at a later date when it gets closer. Because even if we explain it now. You guys are gonna forget until, until <laughs> August anyway. You know, it's just like the Campionas Cup. Uh, essentially, it's uh, the you know winner of MLS and winner of Liga MX facing off against each other. And beyond that, that's pretty much what you need to know. Uh, it's a nice competition in its second year. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, and so uh, I think I believe it was Toronto, and I believe it was T Grace. I, I think so. Yeah. But uh, and I think Liga MX won it last year. But yeah. Uh, and I could be wrong. I'm going off of memory here, but uh, you can correct me in the comments below. Um, yeah. And so Ezekiel Barco, he's been balling out. Woo! Has he, man? Yeah. So. Uh, Zeke made his U20 World Cup debut. Yeah. Uh, the, what was it? Friday. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Saturday. 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 Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, and yeah. Uh, he he had a brace, but that does not even really. Yeah, it doesn't describe how how good this Whew. volley is. We're showing you right now. Holy yeah. crap! This ball from over the top and to hit it side foot side net. First time. Whew. That ball is it coming in the air. I actually did not realize that at first. I thought it was on the ground. It's in the air. He yeah. takes it out of the air. Yeah. And put places it. 
just inside the post. And the penalty he took. Yeah. Top bins. I mean. Strong penalty. Strong penalty. So, listen. 5-2 win over South Africa. Um, yeah. I mean, it's, it's uh, you know, he's showing it on the world stage now. May it continue. And, uh, yeah. I mean, it's just love to see this because yeah it's uh putting him in the shop window and mm -hmm. you can you can definitely expect dollar signs Absolutely. next to his name because of this performance even before that though, i'm just happy for him to come back yeah and bring this play back to atlanta right. he showed this like in the final match of course before yeah. he left so mm -hmm. but i mean the form he's in right now this is mvp level for him if he can, if he can keep it up yeah, for sure, for sure. So, uh, yeah, moving on. Uh, unfortunately, PG Martinez has not made the Argentina squad. Uh, to be fair, there are a lot of uh, also very good players that haven't made it as well. I think, uh, uh, who was it? Dybala doesn't make it. I think uh, Mauro Icardi doesn't make it. Icardi didn't make Icardi it. Icardi didn't make it. Um, Dybala isn't. Dybala isn't, yeah. yeah. And so, but, sure. yeah. yeah, you know, you have a lot of guys that have missed out. On, I mean, Icardi, that's a whole different story. <laughs> <laughs> Wanda. Yeah, exactly. That's a, If you're not familiar with the situation, look it up. Please Google it. do. Holy crap. Uh, it is like a soap opera and a half. Mm. But uh, anyway, so uh, condolences. But yeah, I mean. It's going to be tough for somebody who's not based in Europe, I think. Yeah, I mean, there is that and there is the other aspect of um you know he hasn't been in the best form mm -hmm. uh he took criticism even coming to mls right some some would say in south america that oh you come to mls you shouldn't expect to make the argentina's team to begin with and stuff like that so you know it's up to him to break that stigma yeah. and i think he will it, you know just it's it's a patience game with pt martinez because you know, I think clearly the talent is there. We've seen it. Yeah. Exactly. It's it's in spurts, you know, and in, again, though, with the PT Martinez, he's not ever going to be a Miguel Miron. Right. Don't expect him to track back as much as Miguel Miron does. Or be as physical. Exactly. He's, he's that classic number 10 uh, that, you know, he's just not going to track back. He's... Uh, gonna maybe be a passenger on some matches, but when he has that moment of magic, oh boy, is it good. Yeah, and I, I was, I'll, I'll roll back a little bit what I said. I think he's shown a little bit of physicality, you know, mm -hmm. being able to ride challenges and so on. But yeah, in yeah. terms of tracking back and, you know, putting in tackles and so on, that's just not who he is. Mm -hmm. And we don't want him to not be who he is. Yeah, exactly. I mean, yes, if, uh, if he can add a little bit of work rate, that'd be awesome. But, you know, to expect that, yeah, just, there's uh, enough players to, on this team who can do that anyway. Yeah, exactly. So uh, let's move on. Yeah, so there uh, is that interesting little bit because you know international break is coming up. Joseph Martinez would probably go away with Venezuela. Romario Williams probably go away with Jamaica. Tio Vijalba, if he uh, is not too injured, uh, would probably make Paraguay. And so you know all those guys are probably the you know, top choices to be striker. Yeah. It's gonna be very interesting. Who's going to be our striker that's, if you know that's that's gonna happen? It's just that's it's, our striker death chart right there. That's yeah. one, two, and three right there. Essentially. <laughs> so you know, you have the likes of uh, Brandon Vasquez, who sure. is a guy who can handle being a nine. He has been injured, hasn't played yet this season. It's uh, yeah. I mean, to rely on a guy, I don't know. It, it, it'll be. You know, tough to do that. I think you have Gordon Wild, who played for the twos uh, this weekend as a striker. Mm. So you have that as well. Yeah, he's been playing as wing backs as well. I think they're trying probably to, you know, maybe find some roles for him because he is a guy that is versatile and uh, knows how to find the back of the net as well. I think you might see a Joseph Samuel maybe uh, make some 18s. If not, you know, get a start if uh, all three are away. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, it's, it, you know, might even a Jackson Conway from, uh, you know, like just the academy, just making Elena too. Who knows? But our depth chart, if we don't have those three, oh my God. Ooh, yeah, it's going to be <laughs> tricky. I mean, I got two words for you. False nine. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it could be that. I mean. I could see a, a front three of maybe yeah. Barco, PD, and Gressel, you yeah. know, and. Mm -hmm. Maybe work, work. Work, work some interchange. I mean, I, you know, it, mm -hmm. we'll see. We'll see. Yeah. Frank DeVoy is going to have his work cut out for sure. Exactly. Yeah, that's. it's going to be really interesting to see what uh, the, the fans think of all those lineups when they come out. Yeah. But uh, yeah, uh, also, Andrew Carlton's brother, Alan, uh, he has also been balling out for the uh, Atlanta United Academy U14s. 
uh, scored a goal and scored another goal in uh, not only the semifinals, but or uh, the quarterfinals and also the semifinals. Yeah. And uh, yeah, he scored this banger right here. And you know, from, yeah, at age 14, what were you doing, man? <laughs> <laughs> Not scoring bangers, I can tell yeah. you that much. God, dude, you know, yeah. it's, uh, you know, I think it, it's running in the family. Uh, whatever you want to say about Andrew Carlton, you can say it, but I think still, you know, there's a lot of talent in this family for sure. And I mean, like, it's a fantastic uh, sign to see this performance from the U14s who are on their way to the final now of the Man City Cup. They've gone yeah. up against good competition yeah. and beaten them. And, you know, yeah. like, not every single one of these players are going to make it, but yeah. it's exciting to see who comes through Atlanta's system and eventually plays with the first team and maybe even moves on, a la Tyler Adams. Yeah, could be. Yeah, I mean, that, that's a really great hope. Hopefully we get more uh, than New York Rebels fetched for him from RB Leipzig. But... Um, yeah, that's a dick, dick, dick. Uh, but <laughs> we got to take our shots. Bro. Yeah, I know. Yeah, we haven't beat him at, at uh, Red Bull Arena. We're going to take all the shots we can. <laughs> uh, but in terms of, uh, yeah, so also for, speaking of a former Red Bull and a former Five Stripe, Sal Zizo, the MLS veteran, kind of the nomad of MLS, has retired. Uh, yeah, he was. Pretty much our depth at right wing back or right back last season. Uh, I think he's been chilling with his family in Las Vegas, if his okay. Instagram reads correctly. Oh, okay. And uh, Good for him. yeah, and so you know, uh, you know, best to him in his future endeavors. Mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, I mean, he obviously didn't play a whole lot for us, but you know, he still was on the podium, winning that MLS Cup for us, so he was a part of it. So, uh, moving on to Atlanta United two. Uh, they recently drew Charleston Battery, our former USL affiliate, 1-1 Saturday night at MUSC Health Stadium. Uh, Laurent Kisidou, he scored his first goal of the season to earn this point. And also, there was a Kevin Kratz signing. Ah. Or sighting, rather. Which is midfield depth, Yay! yes, exactly. Returning, please. <laughs> oh, god, desperate. Uh, yeah, and is he gonna play a part in this weekend? Uh, maybe in this midweek game, we'll see. Yeah, we'll but see. uh, so that does it for the news, and that gets us to the mailbag. You guys sent these questions through IG story. Let's continue to send your questions in, and we might answer your question in the future. First question comes from Josuerdez Do you think we are able to score more than one goal a game soon? <laughs> I'll, let you, I'll let you have it first. No, yeah, yeah, for sure. <laughs> I, uh, I do, I do, actually. And you, because of the performance of individual players, right? Mm -hmm. PD's coming into his own. Barco is in yeah. the best form of his life, maybe. And so yeah, they have the players to score two or three goals. I think what you're seeing more than anything else lately is fatigue. And this is a difficult, difficult mm -hmm. part of the schedule because of the schedule, mm -hmm. because of the player availability mm -hmm. or lack thereof. Mm -hmm. And you see where DeBoer's focus is. It's yeah. defense. You yeah. know, this, he did this as Crystal Palace, which is part of the reason why they did not score a goal while he was there. Mm -hmm. But, you know, and you, you heard him talk about that goal and, you know, what they should have done. He's obviously a defensive-minded coach. Yeah, he's so, a former defender. I mean, it makes sense. Yeah. Uh, I, I think that's kind of the, the crux of it is that, yeah, I think gone are the days where we win 4-3 or 3-2. Exactly. Uh, it's more of a grind-out 1-0 type of win, which... I mean, it's difficult. I mean, I think it's part of that, though. I think, though, uh, you know, Frank de Boer wants to impart that possession to be able to create as many chances as possible and score yeah. a lot. But you have that issue where uh, the legs, like you were saying, yeah. aren't under them. And so it also makes it difficult. I think the team, you know, they kind of realize sometimes they have to kind of see out a result sometimes. Yeah. They may not have to go for it. and it kind of shows in the results you, and it's difficult. It's tough to approach the say, the game the same way every week. Yeah. You know what I mean? Especially when you are a high tempo, yeah. high energy type of team. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you just can't bring it. You yeah. Know? And not the same way physically. But, yeah. And I think, <clears throat> although unfortunately, it's more often than not though, the team hasn't uh, been scoring you know, sure. a ton of goals. I think it's, it's not for the lack of chances yeah. most of the matches recently. It's for the lack of finishing. And it's definitely confidence and the conviction in front of goal that's been lacking sorely. Uh, and I think it comes from a little bit of, you know, the setup and the system early on where we were a little bit more defensive. Mm -hmm. And it's maybe putting that 
just you know proverbial handbrake on these players sure. even when they're not even meaning to but i think once uh, the full team's back and we're rested and healthy it'll be at lane united like old like old hopefully hopefully i, I think we all would love to see more goals <clears throat> uh and sure. yeah if we can keep these uh these shutouts going too that'd, that'd be fantastic as well yeah next question comes from just call me doll is it time to take guzan out and give him a rest mm. Mm. That's a tough one. I mean, like, there is a drop off. Yeah, goalkeepers don't really need a whole ton of rest. rest. Uh, yeah, he, he can probably play the entire month. I mean, it's, I think he is who he is. Yeah. You know, um, maybe if you want to give it, if you think he needs a mental break, sure, sure. but I'm not, I'm not sure that he does. And yeah. there is a drop off between from Kuzan to Khan. Yeah. It just or, or, yeah, Brad Kuzan to, to Alec Khan. Yeah, sorry. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. And so, uh, you know, there is that too, though. I mean, uh, if Can did come in, would it kind of maybe at least put a little bit of fire under Brad Guzan, uh, you know, in the case of if he needed to feel like, okay, uh, you know, my position might be under fire, like I might need to worry about my distribution a little bit better or, you know, whatever, whatever. Uh, you know, sometimes it does help a little, but I think... I'm not really so sure that it is really. He, that this issue. is a guy that's like close to the end of his career. Like he yeah. has what, maybe two, three more years at most. Yeah. So you know, it's yeah. I understand like maybe wanting to motivate him, but I don't know if that's necessarily an issue anyway. It's yeah. just like you said, he is who he is. Yeah, and uh, you know, all his flaws or his positives as well. I yeah. think that's that's the type of player he is. Yeah. Next question comes from uh, Terminus United eighty three. Is it the travel or coaching these last two games? I couldn't tell. Now, I mean, I think it's it's kind of a little bit of uh, of both. Travel-wise, yes, absolutely. Going back and forth from West Coast to East Coast, absolutely will kill you. Coaching, um, I think, you know, the lack of rotation earlier, yes. uh, even here and there on some of our key players, I think that's where it did hurt us in these matches, plus the travel. Uh, because you saw our key players just have some of their worst matches, Eric, like an Eric Rometty, um, and then also putting Jonathan Nagby in the 10 roll. I, I can get the experiment, but I think that experiment should be done now. I think we see, <laughs> yeah. you know, in a fairly open game, you know, he wasn't able to dictate as much as, you know, you want him to. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I think uh, I think the coaching is a reaction to the travel Yeah. <clears throat> as well. And then you've seen uh, some experimental lineups with Pereira getting his first start, Miram getting his first start. So if that, you know, if Pereira's played a little more before maybe but yeah it's yeah I think some would argue that a uh, foreign team Pogba uh, probably should have come in to this match gave LGP a rest that type of thing yeah um, yeah I mean it, it could have been I mean this could have been that type of match but you know uh, it, it is very very tough I think uh, you know, playing against a, a New York Red Bulls, I think, in the past match, yeah. to see who you want to rotate out, it's difficult. But, you know, I think maybe against a Colorado Rapids or, you know, against, uh, you know, just one of the weaker sides, yeah. probably seeing a little bit more rotation then maybe would be uh, just a little bit what the doctor ordered. But uh, last question comes from NDMOS8. What's our strongest lineup? Everybody is fit and healthy. Well, see first. yeah, sure. Uh, so my back line would be Escobar, Perez, Miles. I'm still going to hold out on Bello. I think that Bello is the mm -hmm. best left back that we have. Mm -hmm. uh, midfielders, Nagby, Rometty. Forwards, I think our best lineup right now is Vialba, Petey, Barco, and Joseph. I know yep. leaving Gressel out, he has been struggling a little bit. Maybe mm -hmm. it's fatigue. Yeah. Maybe it's lack of form. Right. But like what Tito has shown you, uh -huh. he's he's been direct. He's been creative. Uh -huh. He's been a problem for other teams. And yeah. I'd like to see him continue starting, honestly. And I'd like to see that group start together. Yeah. No, I, I can't argue with your 11 at all. I mean, it's, uh, but I think, you know, in that argument, uh, Bello hasn't really shown too much this year in terms of, I guess, that uh, Heredio Ono. Yeah. Uh, that wasn't too good. Uh, so he hasn't proven himself, and so there is that. Uh, now it's the choice between Shea and Parky. Very tough, because one's definitely a little bit more defensive. One offers just slightly more going forward. What about an Ambrose if he's healthy? Yeah, I think an Ambrose, if he's healthy, I think probably is uh, probably our best left back, left wing back. Um, yeah. And it, which doesn't say a ton, obviously, uh, but I think it's just the kind of depth that we have, and it's MLS, you know. 
uh, love Mikey. It's just, you know, it's contained to MLS, you know? Um, in terms of, like, yeah, it's Gressel uh, versus Tito, I think, right? In sure. terms of that. Um, you know, Gressel definitely has performed in terms of his stats. Uh, I think that's where it's so tough, you know? It's like, you know, do you leave out a Gressel? And it's just <coughs> harsh on him, I think, because yeah. he arguably has more stats than Tito. But well, what do we always those. say about Tito? He would start for most teams. Yeah, agreed. You know, and he was a, a former DP of ours, essentially, and you have, you know, just his game-changing ability. Yeah. Uh, yeah it's, it's tough. I mean, I can't argue with your 11. I would add... Yeah, Ambrose or Parkey as that left back, but yeah, um, yeah. So that does it for the mailbag, and that gets us to the match preview, and it's this Wednesday against Minnesota United at the Benz, and man, you know they're in their hot streak, uh, if you will. They've won two in a row. Yeah, we've lost two in a row. Uh, you know they're a team that. Uh, technically has more points than us. I mean, yes, there's a difference between the matches they play and yeah. what we play. Sure. But uh, so technically they are doing slightly better than us this year. Um, there was an interesting quote from uh, Adrian Heath where he was yeah. like, we finally have a team now. I mean, their their form hasn't been brilliant since that quote, Yeah. but they do actually have some pretty decent players. Yeah, they absolutely do for sure. And, uh, you know, they've uh, they've beat the, uh, the likes of the Chicago Fire 2-0 recently. Uh, they, you know, have also played Columbus Crew to, I believe, a 1-0 loss. I think that's Or a it was a win. win. Yeah. 1-0 win. And, yeah. And so, you know, it, it's one of those things. Like, uh, they're playing much better than we've seen them in the past. You know, sure. definitely in the past. Uh, although, you know, they got us at the Benz because of uh, a crazy goalkeeper situation. Don't um, even remind me. Oh, this, yeah. That might be Go the on. worst loss in the United uh, history. Uh, maybe, maybe. Oh, yeah, that yeah, game yeah. was infuriating. Oh, for sure. Because, yeah, I think just the, the amount of things that were happening that yeah. match. That's definitely, you know. Meanwhile, Guzan's chilling in Trinidad while the U.S. missed the World Cup. Yep. <sighs> Yep, for sure. Uh, but yeah, speaking of those previous matches, yeah, of course there's that snowy 6-1 massive beatdown in uh, their home opener um, for them ever in MLS. You have our 1-0 win against them last season where we were resolute, we played ugly, we did everything we needed to see out the match after no. LGP got that red. And uh, yeah, I mean, you know. Shithousery at its finest. Exactly. And, yeah, it's uh, it's been an up and down type of uh, you know kind of matchup between us and Minnesota United, so it sure. should uh, you know not disappoint for fireworks probably at the very least uh, because their fans apparently hate Atlanta United really really. Apparently, we're not authentic lot. enough. Yeah. Okay. Whatever. Get a bigger fan base. Exactly. So, uh, but let's get into uh, what Minnesota United can do. They are a team that will sit back. They aren't really, really good in possession. Uh, they will really work really hard and kind of steal the ball from us, intercept uh, a lot of our balls. And because, yeah, I mean, you have uh, Alonzo in their side, a, mm. you know, an MLS Cup winner, uh, uh, just a, a veteran of Seattle Sounders. He's a guy that has brought a lot of uh, just, you know, kind of resolute defending to their team and so they're at least a lot you know better in that regard um yeah they're much much better at uh you know creating <laughs> blush uh creating and scoring chances uh than we are at this point right now yeah that's for sure yeah um and so you know it's something that we will have to deal with uh because you know if they get their chance they're gonna take it yeah i mean this sounds like a classic counter-attack style kind of approach and i think the yeah. match sets up well for them in that regard yeah especially you know, us at home exactly you know the team we've seen this time again teams come in sit back it's mm -hmm. a nice open playing field you can get out on the break right a player like darwin quintero which like if he played for seattle or portland or whatever he would have a much bigger profile in this league he's yeah. very good i mean the goal he's already got a decent profile yeah like, exactly yeah. Yeah, exactly. And so, uh, you know, he's a guy that uh, you have to absolutely have to watch for them. He's mm -hmm. got five goals, three assists, and 12 appearances already this season. Mm -hmm. um, yes, he's definitely their danger man for sure. He plays pretty much across their, their front line. So, uh, yeah, he's a guy that you just have to, you know, either stick a Eric Rometty or a Jeff Lorenowitz on. 
and really hope that he can contain him. Um, yeah, another guy is Ike Opar coming over from Sporting Kansas City. I sure. Mean, you know, a guy that uh, Sporting Kansas City are definitely missing, I think. Yeah. And he's a guy that uh, just is a boss for them. Yeah, I think, uh, you know, it's kind of a... I don't controversial move you know spending a lot of money on a yeah. defender uh -huh. you know but it's it's worked out for them so far yeah definitely definitely i mean uh you know so he's got 2.2 .2 tackles per game 5.9 clearances per game i mean he is doing work in the back line and uh you also have jan gregus a uh, defensive midfielder for them who is a guy who is probably uh a guy that likes to dictate things from midfield He's already got three assists from there, no. sitting next to uh, Alonzo. I mean, he's a guy that, uh, you know, like you have to also contain him. I think, you know, if it's a PT that's starting, you have to see if PT can, uh, you know, sit on him a little bit, yeah. at least be in the, his area. Yeah, I think uh, Alonzo and Gregus are gonna be uh, hugely important, especially for how they're gonna approach this match, most likely conceding possession. Yeah. You know, you need that solid base, the two midfielders sitting in front of the defense. Yeah. And, you know, he's shown, Gregus has shown that he can create from that position. Position. Yeah, you know, if it's a ball over the top uh, for Quintero, I mean, it's just like, it's uh, something that we need to look out for, for sure. Definitely. Which uh, gets us to uh, some of the keys to this match for us, and definitely, uh, it's been our Achilles heel this season, I think. Uh, it's safe to say that now, uh, it's finishing our chances. Can we do it? Like, whatever we create, we yeah. have to be icy cool in front of goal, and so far we haven't shown it. Yeah. Um, you know, and... It's the first time we've lost back-to-back uh, -back, uh, for a long time. Can we get on track? And you don't want to see a three-game slide. And so this is very, very important to get us back in the right direction. Yeah. Can we do it? So, yeah. uh, you know, all the, you know, knowing that they're going to be a little bit more sit and counter team, what are we going to do with all the possession? That's going to be hugely important. Yeah, I mean, it, this is really... This is really the uh, type of game that tests a possession team. Yeah. You know, the team that is going to sit back, but also look to hit on the break. Yeah. You know, like Atlanta United have to keep the ball well, have to move the ball, but also be vigilant defensively. I think this is going to be a tough matchup. Definitely. Yeah, yeah it definitely will. Um, and, you know, will more fatigue catch up with us? Yeah. Uh, yes, there are slightly more days. There's four days of rest this time, which... Uh, theoretically should be a little easier. And it's, PD and Escobar did not start. So. Right. So yeah, that right side, if uh, <clears> they <throat> will try to cheat over or at least, um, you know, play to the right side a little bit more, will be somewhere that we could look to exploit. Maybe we can, uh, and maybe we can combine a little bit on that side. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, and so let's get into some of these, uh, these match facts for this match. Uh, Minnesota United, they have conceded at least two goals in 19 of the last 22 away matches. That's an interesting stat yeah. because it really kind of helps us in this regard. So yeah, it means they're probably a little bit better at home, but you know, in terms of uh, on the road, they are likely to ship some goals. And I think Atlanta shown that they need to score that first goal, especially yeah. with the style as it is now, you know, right. it makes it so much easier to control the game. And exactly catch teams out when they come out. So uh, yeah, that first goal for, uh, for Atlanta is going to be huge. Yeah. Uh, and then that uh, there have been under two and a half goals scored in Minnesota United's last five games. Also very interesting to note. And uh, Atlanta United are undefeated in 18 of their last 19 home matches in MLS. It's of you course know, going back to last season, postseason right. run, MLS Cup. Yeah, so you know, we're still pretty stout at home. And yeah, we've kept a clean sheet in our last three matches at home. Some good things to note. We'll see if we can keep that up. Sure. So uh, in terms of some of the injuries for Atlanta United, uh, you know, we talked about Kevin Kratz coming back into training. Brandon Vasquez has come back into training. Of course, George Bellow is out still long term. So, uh, and largely on the whole, everybody else is pretty much healthy. Of course, as Echo Bar goes away, as you may know. And so, uh, that gets us to our predicted starting 11 for this match to get a W. What do you think is going to happen? Or what do you think uh, Farm to Board is going to happen? Let's go through the lines together. Yeah, Rob? sure, sure. Yeah. Uh, so, Bragg is in, obviously. Of course. Between the sticks, who do you have as your, uh, your right back? Escobar. 
yeah, definitely coming back in. Yeah. You know, yeah, more uh, more rest for him, and then you know now and it's he he got an assist fresh. last match. You know, yeah, like, exactly. You see, you know what he can bring. Yeah, you know that he can uh, definitely bring some chances uh, going to the byline for sure. Uh, I think it's Robinson, definitely for sure. Yeah, um, you know, he got a rest recently, so you know I don't think you're gonna see him rest too much. He's 22. He's fine. Yeah. <laughs> uh, now, you know, who's the left center back? That's where it's interesting. Who do you have? I have Perez. Uh -huh. um, and just a little preview, I have mostly a strong lineup. Because, uh -huh. you know, they're on a two game losing streak. I think the Boar and the team will want to turn this around. Yeah. I think they're going to go with their first choice defense, at least. Yeah. Um, I think it's Pogba coming in who did really, really well against Vancouver Whitecaps. I think LGP, uh, you know, you could see a little bit of his heavy legs against uh, RSL late in the match. I think it's, yeah, he hasn't gotten a rust at all during this run. I think this is the match that you see him uh, get that rest. And Pogba uh, can, um, you know, and, and looks good on the ball in that left center back position. I know a lot of you are still saying you should play left back. Uh, I, I just don't think you should do that in a uh, an MLS match uh, unless you see him like come in when we're up. And you just see him, you know, try to bomb up and down the left side or something like that. Yeah. I, I don't know if he has the legs for that, but yeah. uh, you know, if uh, if there is a moment to do that, we'll see. Left back wise, who do you have? Uh, I got Shay. I think uh, you know he, he's the easy first choice left back right now. I don't think he's been bad. Yeah, you know? and it's been you know going back and forth yeah. between Parky and Shay. Yeah. Um, it's it's difficult to call, I think, but yeah, Shay. I think for me as well. Um, you know, he does. Uh, just have a little bit more and better service from the left side than a parky does. Um, and I don't think that, you know, you're going to see as much of a need for kind of the defensive side of it because Minnesota United's gonna sit back as much. So right. you need a guy who can uh, try at least to But at the same the time, like, you know he can run back. Yeah. You know, because if, in case Minnesota gets on the counter. Right. Uh, now he isn't like the most speedy guy, but yes, you know, there is that. But uh, so in the middle as well now then, uh, I think we're both in agreement. Nagby. Nagby, yeah, yes, absolutely. Yeah, I think you need a guy to control the possession in this match when we are definitely going to control a lot of possession. Yeah. Yeah. So you want that guy who can break the lines when we are. Nagby playing his natural position. Yes. Right. Yeah, exactly. And uh, that's okay. also where we differ, I think. Uh, who's going to be next to Nagby for you? I think it's Rumeni. Uh, yeah. I think uh, you want a midfielder who's going to cover a little more ground in this match, maybe uh, someone who's going to mark Quintero. Mm -hmm. uh, and you've seen how De Boer has used Rumeni. Rumeni actually is important to the possession play as well. Mm -hmm. He will sometimes collect the ball from Guzan. Yeah. So uh, I, I think you see Rumeni and Nagby here. Yeah. Okay. Um, I think you know Rumeni not playing his best match last uh, against uh, RSL. I think you have just Jeff Lerner with, uh, you know, you know, he's got his legs under him, I think, uh, at least a little bit. Um, more so than Rometty, because you have to remember, Rometty just came back from that head injury. Right. Um, I think, you know, Jeff can do a job on Quintero. It's just a matter of how well he's going to be able to do it. Uh, because, yeah, I mean, you saw him not really close down too well uh, last match. But, you know, and Quintero, he, he can, you know, chip it. He can uh, shoot a little bit from distance. I yeah. mean, I think... You know, the wily veteran in Jeff Lerovitz is our best bet here. Sure. But, um, yeah, moving on into the attacking midfielders. Let's go with the left midfielder first. What do you got? I have uh, Miram lining up, actually. Yeah. I mm -hmm. think that uh, he showed some decent signs. I think he just needs a little more playing time with the team. Yeah. And I think in with a more first-choice lineup, mm -hmm. there's not as much pressure on him. Yeah. He can have an impact on this match. Yeah. Um, I think Miram agreed uh, on the left side. Uh, because, um, you know, he is good in possession as well as familiar. Um, and so us having to play this, it'll be a little bit easier. Uh, he won't have to, he, he is pacey uh, himself, but he won't have to get up and down because I think, you know, coming back, it was not really the, the best signs in the Vancouver match. Mm -hmm. But uh, I think for me, because he's playing on the left, uh, normally, where Pereira was playing last match, anyway, yeah, uh, he moves over to the right for me. Okay, and I think uh, because he still uh, he was subbed off, he has the legs, I think, uh, to still make an impact in this match. 
yes, there still is that little bit of unfamiliarity, but it's just we need some rotation. It's tough. It's really, really tough. Yeah. Who do you have on the right? Uh, I got Gressel. I know that he's, you know, tired, not in the best form, but uh, Tito, I'm not sure, you know, if... Yeah, he's day to day. Yeah. We have no idea how long that actually is. And he might could use a rest. So, yeah. you know, I think, uh, I think, yeah, you go with Gressel mm -hmm. again. Maybe, maybe he gets himself, you know, yeah. gets on the score sheet, gets an assist in this match. You yeah. Know. And yeah, you know, kicks on and makes his, uh, you know, turns around the season a little bit. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah. And I think, uh, in the 10 role, it's... PT Martinez, uh, sure. he got the rest, so he's coming in fresh and uh, hopefully to affect this match and really pull the strings and make things happen in the box for Atlanta United. Yeah, if there was a match where we needed PD to be like the player of the match, it would be this one, I think. Yeah, I think definitely for sure. And up top, it's gotta be Jose Martinez. I be. mean, uh, <laughs> he hasn't really rested at all in this stretch, yeah. but it is one of those things like he's been able to kind of <laughs> save his legs a little bit. Uh, he hasn't looked all that knackered. Um, yeah. yeah, I mean, playing the striker position, there is a difference in the amount of running, I guess, uh, and some of the times you can actually kind of chill offside a little bit and yeah. then come back in and make that curling run. So, you know, the amount of running is not midfield, that's for sure. Yeah, so, and it's just, you know, he realistically, realistically, who do you bring in? You know right, I mean? exactly. Like, there's Romario, I and mean, he's a fine player, but he's not quite Joseph. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> the The difference in them is quite stark. Yeah. Uh, Romario, not quite as good as uh, Joseph Martinez as in holding up the ball. Uh, kind of more of a guy that can run onto a ball uh, with, you know, kind of running it behind or running at players, uh, trying to dribble from the wing. But if anything, I think there's an outside shot of Tito starting a striker, but yeah. no, it, we're in agreement with Joseph, I think. Yeah. So uh, that gets us to our score prediction for this match. And yeah, I mean, you know, this is with all the stats uh, that we've just mentioned, what do you think is going to happen? Yeah, I think this is setting up for a 2-1. Uh, you know, maybe uh, Lena go up 2-0 and then uh, let one in at the uh -huh. end. But uh, yeah, we saw that uh, there have not been a lot of mat uh, a lot of goals in Minnesota's recent matches, and same yeah. thing with Atlanta. And you know, if we're yeah. expecting Minnesota to come in and camp, yeah. I think that it's going to be we're not going to see too many shots on goal. I think overall. Mm. So yeah, I'm thinking a two-one. Yeah, uh, I agree. I agree. It's a two-one. I mean, it's largely they are apt to ship goals on the road. Uh, we do create a lot of chances at home. And I think though, uh, you know, we will score first and that will kind of open it up slightly for us. And, you know, they'll get one, but we can finish off the match and right this ship. So that is good news. And that does it for the match preview and gets us to the question of the day. A lot of guys have played a lot of minutes recently. How much rotation do you expect Wednesday night? You've heard our starting 11. Get in the comments, tweet at us, let us know what you guys think. But guys, that does it for us today. Remember to subscribe if you haven't already, smash that like button, and share this video because it really does help us a lot. And for Mark, I'm AJ. Thank you guys so much for watching.